And it's a question of sport now on BBC Two. Welcome to a question of sport, and Bill Belmont has won the last three rounds, so Ian Botham is now 4-2 down. On the inside tonight, Mark Blundell and Sally Gunnell. Mark, the ex-Formula Ford European champion and Le Mans 24-hour winner, has just enjoyed his best season on the Grand Prix circuit. He's been at the World Championship point several times and was placed in the first three in both South Africa and Germany. Sally, too, has enjoyed her best year ever. Having won the Commonwealth 400 metre hurdles title in 1990, she won Olympic gold last year and this summer became champion of the world in a new world record time. <laughs> Bell teams up with Jack Russell and Teddy Sheringham. Jack is the Gloucestershire wicketkeeper who's back in the England squad and goes on the West Indies tour. He first played county cricket when only 17. Has played in 31 test matches, scored over a thousand runs and 88 dismissals for England. Uh, Teddy Sheringham is the Spurs and England striker who started with Millwall and helped the club win the second division championship. With Nottingham Forest, he was a member of their winning side in the Zenith Cup final and having cost Spurs £2 million, was the top scorer in the Premier League last season. <laughs> Well, tonight we begin our competition for you at home. Straight on now to round one and the problem of naming the face or figure behind the 12 numbers. Sally, you're the starter. Oh, um, let's go number six, please. Um, Janetta Miles. Jill Miles. Jill. The world 400 meter champion from America. <laughs> close enough. <laughs> Jay Miles. Also got a gold in the 4x400. Jack Russell, your number. Number seven, please, David. That's Ryan Giggs. Uh, Man United, that's right, and Wales. Uh, must be nice for you to be back on the England scene. Yeah, pleased to be back. It's been a while, but uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to the tour. Mm. Yeah. You've been to the West Indies before? Yeah, we were there last time. Uh, it's a tough place to go, but uh, you know, if we play well enough, we can, we can beat them. Now, how's your other activity going? It's going very well, yeah. It's, uh, I've been doing quite a bit since the end of the season, and uh, I've got my own gallery now, so all my pictures go into that. Paintings, are they drawings or both? Paintings now, most of it's paintings, yeah, 90%. Watercolour? No, all on canvas. Oh, so by numbers? Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> OK, Jack, nice to see you back. On we go to Mark. <laughs> Number eight, please, David. Don't get a racing driver. Crikey. Jennifer Capriati. Yeah, mm. Capriati. Jennifer Capriati. Jennifer Capriati. That is absolutely right. <laughs> the Olympic champion? Yeah. If you say so. Yeah. <laughs> Is it 400 yeah, metres? your season this time. Immensely, yeah. I've had a fantastic year. Um, it's been a bit up and down, but towards the end uh, it was a bit grinding, but the beginning was certainly good. Mm. Hope it goes well next season. Thanks very much. And we go to Teddy, your turn. Number one, please, David. Is it Boone? You're the cricketer, mate. You're under no pressure, mate. That's me. No, not Boone. So Jack's gone for Capital Dev. 100% so far. No reasons why the captain should uh, break that record, Ian. Do you want to bet? <laughs> <laughs> Number five, please, David. Oh, no. <laughs> why can't they get them? Oh, gosh. You're going to leave it up to me, aren't you? Well, it's a better idea than me, Sal. Yeah. Heikey Henkel. Heikey Henkel. Uh, European Olympic, Olympic, Olympic high jump champion. That's yes, right. You're yeah. quite right. Bill. Number four, please, David. England cricket captain. Reliably mm. <laughs> <laughs> informed, it's Mark Bosnich from Aston Villa. The Australian World Cup goalkeeper plays for Aston Villa. So, end of the round, 100%, six points each.
Well, in round two, the guests get their own sports, the captains don't, and no help allowed. Uh, Sally, for you, some magical moments from the Barcelona Olympics. For one point, can you name the woman winning the 200 metres? And for a second point, the heptathlete going for gold. And the British captain is the Olympic champion. The greatest prize in sport. We'll talk about that in a moment. <laughs> um, the heptathlete was Jackie Joyner Kersey. Correct. And the 200 winner was Tor uh, Gwen Torrance. Who also got a gold in the 4x1, I think. Yeah. yeah. Well done, Salda. What about you? I mean, since then, you've gone on to uh, become world champion and world record holder. Yeah, sounds good, doesn't it? <laughs> it's not bad, is it? But uh, did you expect that world record that night? I wasn't going out there to break the world no. record I, I mean I knew it was going to have to be a fast time because I realised that Sandra Farmer was in pretty good shape but you don't you know stand on the line and think right you know I'm, tonight's the night I'm going to break a world record it is just going to happen I knew it would happen when it's when it was ready did you expect that pressure from her <laughs> to tell the truth no, no. because the, all the races leading up to it you know I'd very much dominated the whole event and then you know she'd been off injured and I hadn't raced her for probably about six weeks and all of a sudden you know she'd came out and run really well in sort of like the heats and the semis and I thought well she's she's in pretty good shape. And winter training? Yeah we've literally probably go away for a, sort of three weeks in January. I'm not very good at going away for a long time concentrating on it. I like to do sort of short periods of time so I'll go in January and then maybe again in March but I, it's, it's good to you know do a lot of the slog work back home. In the wind and the rain. <laughs> of course, the Europeans won, you've not won yet. Yeah, that's the last one. That so. would be the complete collection. That would be it. All four. Hope it goes well, sir. Thank you. Jack Russell, take a look at the Australian wicketkeeper Ian Healy in great form in the Ashes series last summer. In this sequence, he stumps three England batsmen, named two. Robin Smith. One point. And Chris Lewis. Two points, you've got it. Do you, which you I know think, the third, Which I way? think was a pair. Sorry, Louis. <laughs> um, the third was Thorpey. That's right, absolutely right. Uh, Healy had some series, didn't he? Yeah, he did a, he did a good job all round, really. Yeah, uh, got over 60 with the bat, or around 60 with the bat. Yeah. Really. He's very underrated. I mean, he gets a lot of stick, but actually he does, uh, he does quite a good job. Quite a good job for And him. in the series, he took 21 catches and five stumpings. Yeah, that's a brilliant effort, isn't it? You'd Brilliant. be pleased to come home with that from the West Indies, wouldn't I'd you? love that, yeah. <laughs> Set up for that. <laughs> On we go. Mark, your turn. Damon Hill being chased in the recent Japanese Grand Prix. There's quite a scrap going on behind him. The two drivers involved, please. Drivers behind Damon Hill there? Riddick Bow and uh, Holyfield. <laughs> 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 We'd almost settled for that. It was um, Ayrton Senna yeah. and Eddie Irvine. And, uh, <laughs> yes, you're right. And they went on, there was a punch up afterwards, wasn't there? 
I believe so. I mean, I wasn't there, but I would have paid good money to be there. <laughs> <laughs> what was the version of the pits, then? Well, I think there was just a, a little bit of confusion over um, who had the right to be in front of, uh, of, of, of each other. And Senna was leading the race. Irvine was uh, fine to position with Damon. And there's a sort of unwritten rule that you shouldn't overtake the leader. And Irvine did, and Senna wasn't very happy about it, as we can all see in the papers afterwards. Ringside tickets next year? Yeah, I've put my order in already. <laughs> well done, Mark. On we go to Teddy Sheringham. Teddy, Everton Coventry from last season. Who scores from the free kick? And name the international scoring the breakaway goal. The first one was Peter Brigery, um, great goal for Everton. Uh, it's nice to see him score to do a little uh, party piece like that. After. Yeah, actually, that's Daley Thompson class, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Can it's you do that? Um, I've tried it once or twice before. but <laughs> and what not, happened? Yeah, you can imagine. <laughs> <laughs> I, bet the, I bet the manager stopped that, hasn't he? Yeah, that's enough of that, Ted. Just score the goals and uh, that'll do for us. And the second one was Andalove. Yep. I think it's Peter Andalove. From Zimbabwe. Yes. Good player, isn't he? Does look very good, yeah. Although, was Neville South all a bit unlucky though? There was a deflection. Yeah, it did take a bit of deflection, but um, I'm sure he'll claim it all the time. <laughs> okay, on we go to the captains. Ian, unlike the guests, the captain's questions can go on offer if you're wrong. But since you're on golf this week, you should be safe. Hmm. All this action took place in 1990. Who misses a short putt? Who nearly holes from a bunker? Much of the short putt being missed, was there? Short putt being missed? Yeah. That was one of the questions. <laughs> Peter Senior missed from the bunker. Yes. I couldn't see much. I'm going to have a stab in the dark. Lee Jansen. No. Is that a Fred Couples or Jamie Spence? Fred Couples. You've got it, Bill. Very well done. <laughs> Teddy got him. Well, Teddy got, got it. it. You've got the short putt. Right, let's see how you go on this then, Bill. Like You're strong on down. tennis, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, very strong. Yes. Both on my forearm. Yeah. You've action from various Wimbledon men's singles matches. For your two points, can you name the only two players shown who've never won the men's singles title? Such a good time, I'm having a ball. Don't stop me now. If you wanna have a good time, just give me a call. Don't stop me now. I'm having a good time. Don't stop me yes, now. I'm having a good time. I don't wanna stop at all. It's one Mayot, Tim Mayot. One point. And was it David Wheaton? You are on form. End of the round. That round's made a difference. Bill 13, Ian 11. Keep going, lads. Keep going. 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 Keep going.
The team? <laughs> the team think we're going to go for Steve Nicholl. A uh, Liverpool and Scotland player. Mm. Former player of the year. You've got a mm. hole in one. Well done. <laughs> Good team effort there. And we move across to Bill, Jack and Teddy. For you three, someone in the security business. Sally got very excited. Is it Linford Christie? It is not. Ooh. I'm having a bit of a stab here. Is it Tony Jarrett? The English 110 metres hurdles record holder, and it is Tony <laughs> Jarrett. <laughs> 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 World Championship silver. Yeah, that was pretty difficult. And actually, that's uh, done at Ian's turn a favour from being two down, they're now two in front. 15 13. <laughs> and in round four, the team's uh, members can go home for one point or play away for two. Sally. Home, please. Only one woman ran in the final of the 400 metre hurdles at the Los Angeles Olympic Games in 84 and at Barcelona eight years later. She also represented different countries in both finals. Name her. Sandra Farmer-Patrick. Of course it was, yes. Well Ooh. done. <laughs> Your great rival. Yeah. Just a worrying pause for a moment. <laughs> and Jack, home or away? Home, please, don't. Four wicketkeepers have taken 11 catches in a county match. Arnold Long and David Burstow held that record until 1989, when their total was equalled by two others. Name either of them. It's one of two. Um, it wasn't the Durham keeper. No. <laughs> <laughs> we, didn't, we didn't get 11 edges all season. Go for Warren Haig. Uh, Warren Haig, no, of Lancashire, you're quite right. Do you know the other one? Well, I've got Steve Marsh written down. And, no, and actually, Alex Hegg, 11 versus uh, Derbyshire, but uh, you just said Alex Stewart as well, didn't yeah. you? Uh, yeah. Um, he got 11 against yeah, Leicestershire. Well done. Mark, home or away? Home. Home. At which home. circuit this year did Ayrton Senna score a record sixth win, breaking a record which had stood since 1969? Monaco Grand Prix. You've got it. Monaco is quite right. And we go to Teddy. Home or away? Home again, please, Teddy. Which team had the best home record but the worst away record in the Premier League last season, losing only once on their own ground but failing to win at all on their travels? Leeds United. OK, you've got your point. Now, Ian, big decision. Home or away? I'll gamble. Home. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Which university captain missed the varsity match to play in a test match for England in 1982? <laughs> I'll go away. <laughs> 82. Yeah. What's he writing, Sal? He's working out the two universities. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> Was I captain in 82? <laughs> Does anyone know? <laughs> we're, having, we're having a year out then, Beef. Oh. <laughs> no. Ding. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we were getting a ray of inspiration there for a minute. <laughs> OK, here we go. Make a fool of myself yet again. <laughs> Was it Cambridge? Did he play Captain <laughs> Cambridge? <laughs> I can't think of him being as a captain, that's the problem. It's like making me captain, you wouldn't do it. <laughs> OK, here we go, just to cut, because I have got um, a dinner tomorrow night to attend. <laughs> Derek Pringle. That's the hardest one, one point, in the oh. series ever. <laughs> I couldn't believe I made it. 
Hey, I've got an easy question. Then. No, it isn't. That's why you got it. Oh, right. Well, let's see what William gets. Well, I'll gamble on a home question then. <laughs> In 1903... <laughs> Just when you... Your WMC <laughs> McEwen played for South Africa, having previously been capped by Scotland, who, 90 years later, became the second Scottish international to play for South Africa. So it must be 1993 then. <laughs> Very good, Bill. Well, that's only yesterday. He was a hooker, and he was called John Allen. Of Natal, you mm. are quite right. End of the round, two points the difference. Ian, 18, Bill, 16. Oh. Well, the question in round five is what happened next? And for Ian's team, it's snooker. A match involving David Taylor and Kirk Stevens. Taylor's about to break off in the eighth frame. What happened next? Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> he fall off his chair or something, didn't he? No, everyone seemed relaxed, everyone seemed sane. You can't totally miss shoot something like that. It's not that big that table, is it? We think he probably missed the reds. Touch of genius there. He missed the lot. <laughs> you can't believe it either. It's like me playing that. Two points, well then, team there. And we go to uh, Bill, Jack, and Teddy. This is a beauty. It's baseball, a match from earlier this year. Chicago Cubs playing the Giants. The Giants are fielding. What happens next? There's a sort of dugout there, isn't there? So do you think it's just what's called it? a ball pen? Ball pen, is it? Right. There's a little hut there which is commonly known as the ball pen. Very good, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> the ball flies into the ball pen and hits one of the uh, players while he's sat in there watching no, what's going on. Do. Right, we actually think the ball's still live and we think it goes into the ball pen, bounces around there. But because the ball's live, the, time, the guy's still running, isn't he, while it's in the ball pen? They call it a home run, don't they? Because yeah, you... because he keeps running all the way around while they try and get it out the ball pen or whatever. Well, I think you've got one point. Now, the Cubs the hitter pen. hits the ball <laughs> towards the ball pen. A Giants reserve's in there. Now, he shouldn't have the door open. And too late, he realises what's going to happen, and he shuts the ball inside. <laughs> now, he's... Uh, on the way for a home run, for which he's got one point. Now, this is the fielder, not the reserve, and he can't find the ball. <laughs> and his own teammate, the reserve, has got it in the box. <laughs> can't believe it. <laughs> I don't think that reserve would be smiling when he got in the dressing room, especially, Ian, if you'd been playing. I wouldn't have been too happy. <laughs> End of the round now, Ian, five points in front. 21 to 16. Uh, nine points to be won in round six, the one minute round, and Ian, Sally, and Mark go first. Let's go, yep. Athletics, name the 18 years old British woman who competed at the 1993 World Championships. Carry on. Soccer, the last club to beat Arsenal in an FA Cup final was? Uh, move on. Where is this? Spa, Frankishire. Yep. Motor racing, where did Damon Hill complete a hat trick of Formula Kelly One? Kelly Holmes. No. Hat trick, where did he do it? Hat trick this season. Did you say no? No. Hungry? No. 18. Just fire all the tracks yeah. Hungry, Monza? Monza, yes. Tennis. Which woman won the last of her 18 Grand Slam singles titles in 86? Uh, Lloyd. Uh, yeah. yeah. Three to name. Dalton Grant. Yep. Uh, Damien Martin. Uh, not Damien Martin, uh, Michael Slater. Yep. And what's the rugby put a fire? Yes. Yeah. yeah. And what was the other question? Can you go back? Soccer. The last club to beat Arsenal in the FA Cup final was an athletics. Name the 18-year-old British woman who competed at the 93 Manchester World United, Championship. Liverpool, uh, Tottenham. Oh, no, you're out of, out of time. Catherine Merry was the athlete. I thought you said 800. No. I said competed. I didn't give the event. Uh, soccer. The last club to beat Arsenal in an FA Cup final was West Ham, 1-0 in 1980. OK, yeah. Bill, Jack, okay. Teddy. All right, lads. Yep. Cricket. Which English keeper scored a Test match century in Australia in '86? Jack Richards. Snooker. Who won their first ever ranking tournament at this year's Grand Prix in Reading? Ebden. Peter Ebden. Where is this? Villa. No. Highbury. Highbury. Yes. Soccer. Name the French side playing in this year's European Cup. Monaco. 
Golf. The Briton who won this year's British Masters is... Uh, Baker? Yes. Peter Three Baker. to name. That's all you've got left. Uh, Yian Evans. One point. Van Basten. Uh, two points. Um, Sandy Law, is it? Sandy Law. Nine Lyle. out of well nine. Well, on we go to the uh, numbers game again. Six left. And the starter is Sally. Number 12, please, David. Oh. Can't we name the flowers instead? <laughs> <laughs> David Fertie. David Fertie? You've worked that out extremely well. Oh. Good. 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 Former Ryder Cup player. Uh, Jack, your turn. Number three, please, David. Racing driver. Gone figure. <laughs> 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 We'll have a go at uh, Nick Popperwell. The Irish prop played in all three Lions test matches against the All Blacks. Mm. Mark, your number. Number 10, please, David. Mm. Yeah? Oh, sorry. Yeah. Be right the other two times. <laughs> Think that it's Mark Kalkovecchia. Afraid the advice you received wasn't right this time. Oh, oh, I said that. Oh, Lonnie Watkins. Desi Smith of Ireland. Won the Madrid Open a few yeah. weeks yeah. ago. Yeah. Mm. And we go to uh, Teddy. Your turn. Uh, Quite important. Three points the difference. Racing. Driver. Number nine, please. Racing. <laughs> That's <laughs> Alain Prost. Is it? That's good, isn't it? Alain Prost. The world champion, Grand Prix driver, is quite right. Well, one point in it, Ian 30, Bill 29, Ian's turn. Number 11, David. Hmm? Looks like... Looks like... I think it's Michele Aberretto. I think it's Michele Aberretto. You guess right. He's the driver for And Bill's team complete the match with number two. Well, Jack, you finish it off then. It looks like Richard Blakey. Uh, the Yorkshire wicketkeeper was on the tour last uh, year of India. You've got your two well done, and that means there's only one point in it at the end, but Ian's team wins by 32 to 31, and now in the match, uh, Bill four rounds, Ian three. Now it's time for this year's viewers' competition and the prizes. The first is an eight-day trip to Soccer's World Cup Finals in America next summer. The second prize is four days at the Winter Olympics in Norway. The third prize is a very special day out at the British Grand Prix. Now the first question. Who is the former Norwich City defender making this scoring chance for Lee Dixon? Next week, question two. But just a hint now of what's to come in question three. To take part, you'll need a game card, and to obtain the card, you must send a stamped addressed envelope to this address. A question of sport competition, PO Box 111, Chatham, Kent, ME4, 4LS. See you next week, same time, same place. Till then, goodbye.